Objection. In 1941, in an address delivered at an event in honor of the Canadian Prime Minister, Winston Churchill famously declared, Canada is the linchpin of the English-speaking world. As with most things, Churchill was able to see deeper truths and recognize Canada for what it really is. Today, I want to recognize the close and vital relationship between the United States and Canada, our great neighbor to the north. Canada is a critical partner to both America and Arkansas. We ought to find every way to strengthen our relationship and avoid every possible trouble on the horizon. The bond between the U.S. and Canada starts with our common heritage and our common way of life, individual rights, constitutional democracy, the rule of law, open markets, and the defense of freedom around the world. Canada has stood with the United States in our toughest hours to defend our common way of life. Canadian troops fought alongside our GIs on D-Day at Juneau Beach, where one in every 13 Canadians perished. After the 9-11 attacks, Canada was one of the first countries to join our campaign in Afghanistan, where 158 brave Canadians died on the battlefield, the rough equivalent of 1,400 American troops. As with our own soldiers, we honor their ultimate sacrifice and entrust their families to the tender care of a loving providence. Canada has also been a willing partner in many other security and humanitarian operations around the globe, including Libya, Haiti, and the NATO-led stabilization force in Bosnia-Herzegovina in the 1990s. Moreover, Canada is part of the Five Eyes Intelligence Partnership, which has its roots in World War II. This partnership is vital to our national security, helping, for example, to disrupt a 2013 Al-Qaeda-associated plot to derail a train traveling between New York and Canada. If successful, this attack could have killed dozens, perhaps even hundreds. Canada and the United States also share the world's longest border and the world's longest peaceful border. Over 300,000 people cross our shared border every day by every mode of transport. Americans, too, often forget ours is the most secure and mutually beneficial international relationship among nations, taking for granted our peaceful partner to the north. Our success as the global superpower and our ability to protect our interests and global stability depends heavily on a peaceful and productive relationship with Canada. Without it, the new world would not be able to project power into the old. And our relationship with Canada is indeed productive, as Canada has remained our best and most important trading partner. Last year, $759 billion in goods and services moved between Canada and the U.S. To put that in perspective, Canada purchased more goods from the United States than did all 28 members of the European Union combined, and two and a half more times than did China. These purchases included everything from raw materials to paper produced in Ashdown, rice milled in Stuttgart, and construction hardware manufactured in Blyville. Moreover, Canada is the largest supplier of energy to the United States. In January, in fact, the U.S. imported more oil from Canada than all OPEC countries combined. And Canada produces 97 percent of all U.S. natural gas imports. Of course, these numbers could be even greater if President Obama would finally approve the Keystone XL pipeline which would also create thousands of high-paying American and Canadian jobs. Arkansas, like America as a whole, has benefited immensely from our close ties to Canada. Agricultural products, iron and steel produced in Arkansas factories, and countless other products manufactured in the natural state find their way to our friends in the north, providing our Kansans with good customers and good jobs. Indeed, Canada is Arkansas's number one foreign customer, and 66,000 Arkansas jobs depend on U.S.-Canada trade and investment, which totals $2.3 billion every year. Some of Arkansas's most recognizable names reflect those Arkansas-Canada ties. Murphy Oil, headquartered in El Dorado, has operated in Canada for over 60 years, producing oil and natural gas through stakes in several projects off the coast of Newfoundland and in Alberta and British Columbia. Walmart has also had a strong presence in Canada for over 20 years, Today, they employ over 90,000 Canadians across nearly 400 retail stores. Tyson and Skippy Peanut Butter are just two of the household names produced in Arkansas that are pantry stables in Canada. And with agricultural products making up 20 percent of Arkansas's exports to Canada, Arkansas's ranchers and farmers help round out Canadians' pantries and freezers. Given these long-standing long and warm ties to Canada, 
My team and I have worked closely with the Canadian Embassy during my time in Congress to promote and strengthen our relationship. Unfortunately, the Obama administration at times has impeded it. The Keystone Pipeline, for instance, is not just good for American jobs, but also a critical project for Canada's economy. Yet President Obama dismissed it as mere Canadian oil from Canadian companies. Cavalier comments that minimize the pipeline's benefits for American workers while also manifesting a casual disregard for our close allies' interests. Now we're seeing this neglect again with country of origin labeling requirements for meat products processed in the U.S., which threaten to disrupt trade between our two countries. These so-called cool regulations needlessly require different labeling for products born, raised, or slaughtered in either country. Today, processors are forced either to operate two production lines to keep their Canadian born and raised cattle separate from those born and raised in the U.S., or to maintain extensive records on where each head of cattle came from. These regulations unduly burden Canadian producers and American processors, while also violating our treaty obligations, yet they deliver little value to consumers. Yet, despite multiple adverse rulings from the World Trade Organization, the administration continues to pursue appeals, a process which is expected to end next month. As a result of these trade barriers and WTO rulings, Canada may be forced to impose reciprocal trade barriers on American products. Unfortunately, products already targeted for trade barriers include Arkansas rice, poultry, grains, and beef. If the administration does not relent, nearly $130 million in Arkansas agricultural trade with Canada will be threatened, more than half our state's annual total. We should put a stop now to this trade dispute that no one intended and no one wants. I stand ready to work with my fellow senators and the administration to modify the labeling requirements at the earliest opportunity following a final WTO ruling. It will be good for Arkansas's farmers and ranchers, good for American consumers, and good for the health of the U.S.-Canada partnership. Let's work together, fix this problem, protect American jobs, and help our neighbor to the north remain our linchpin in the world.